That you fast is better for you if only you knew, or if only you know. So the first revelation that came, what did it say? What did I just tell you? It said that fast for a fixed number of days, but if you're ill or on a journey, the same number of days can be made up. Um, if you're old, you know, you can feed the poor people, which we still see in FIC. We still see the precedence for this. But what we're going to later learn is that a new verse came down. And this verse was abrogated. And I'll give you the name of the scholars that actually talk about this in a few minutes, inshallah. Ramadan in 2016 will start on Monday the 6th of June or Tuesday the 7th of June and will continue for 30 days until Tuesday the 5th of July or Wednesday the 6th of July. So keep that in mind. Mark your calendars and start preparing your hearts for the month of abstinence. Not the month of indulgence, but the month of abstinence. In an address to the believers of this Ummah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered them to fast, that is, to abstain from food, drink, and sexual activities with the intention of doing so sincerely for Allah, the exalted alone. And we fast from true or false. Muslims fast from sunrise to sunset. Very good, I'm so proud of you. We fast from dawn until sunset. One of the things that the Faith uh, Club book is actually erroneously reports. Um, and a lot of people report it. I've even heard it. I've heard people just say it many times. We fast from dawn until sunset. And there's about an hour and 20 minutes difference if you um, want to look at the difference between dawn and sunrise. This is because fasting purifies the soul and cleanses them from the evil that might mix with them and their ill behavior. If you want to purify yourself, and if you remember just a few weeks ago, we were talking about eating of the pure things, this prescription in Soral Bakra. And I want to tell you that there's nothing pure about sugar. There's something pure about the sugar that comes out of fruit, but there's nothing sure about Dixie Crystal. There's nothing pure. We now know that sugar causes inflammation in the body and creates all kinds of health problems. So when we talk about eating from what is pure, don't only think in terms of the biha. Think about what is actually pure. We now know that people are eating stuff that the body doesn't even recognize because Allah didn't make it. Man made it. So the body doesn't know what to do with it, so it turns it into fat and we get sick. So if you want to purify yourself, then you must abstain. You must abstain not only from eating, but you must abstain from negativity. You must abstain from faults. Imam Ghazali said that there's three levels of fasting. He said the first one is the fasting where you're just hungry and thirsty. And no, nobody need that. Allah said that in the Quran. He doesn't need that from us. But the second level of fasting is where you fast your eyes from the Victoria's Secret magazines. You fast your eyes from the billboards. You fast your ears from certain songs or from certain speech. You fast your tongue from swearing, from lying, from exaggerating, from talking and gossiping and uh, slandering people. This is abstinence. This is what it means to abstain. I'm, abs I'm, going, I'm working this month to abstain from talking about people anymore. And the next time when I get together with the brothers or sisters, I'm not going to talk about my husband or wife unless it's something good because the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, if you don't have anything good to say, don't say anything at all. This is about abstinence, folks. So that second level of fasting is that I'm fasting what I listen to. So when that believer comes up to me and they've got that look and they're looking over there to make sure the person they want to talk about is not looking and they say, brother, do you know what? Do you know what so and so did? I don't want to know. I don't want that sin on my ear and I don't want that sin on my heart. Because what is a sin to say is a sin to listen to. And then Imam Ghazali said that the third level of fasting is that you actually fast your thoughts. So that if a thought comes into your head, you abstain from that thought. You say, "Awwudu billahi min ash-shaytanirajim." I seek refuge with Allah from the accursed Satan who has introduced to me negativity. 
who has introduced to me something bad. And this is the highest level of fasting. I pray that I will live to get there. That I will actually fast my thoughts. I will abstain, purposefully abstain from thinking evil. Allah mentioned that He has ordained fasting for Muslims just as He ordained it for those before them. They being an example for them in that, so that so they should vigorously perform this obligation more obediently than the previous nations. <clears throat> the previous nations did not have 30 days. They didn't have that blessing, that gift. Allah gave it to us. The psychologists of the world say that it takes 21 days to establish a new habit. Allah gave us 30, an extra 9. So that we can make sure that in the month of abstinence we establish good habits. That we correct our behavior that isn't according to Paran and Sunnah. Uh, and Surah Al-Ma'ida, Surah 5 and verse 48, To each among you we have prescribed a law and a clear way. If Allah had willed, He would have made you one nation, one ummah, but that He may test you in what He has given you. So complete, compete in good deeds. Compete in good deeds. In the month of Ramadan, we should be competing for good deeds. We should be vying for good deeds. But instead, we are competing to see who can get in line first at Suhoor and at the Iftar. And as a matter of fact, we're competing more vigorously than some marathon runners. Watch it, folks. Come and see it for yourself. There's no abstinence whatsoever involved. It's just pure <coughs> indulgence. Even in the face of the house of Allah, what does it say about our consciousness when we come to the house of Allah to break our fast and we don't want for our brother what we want for ourselves anymore. We want to be number one in line. And we will eat so much that the people at the end of the line don't get food. How many people has this happened to? I'm the only one. May soon and one. Just five of us? I want you to look this year. I promise you'll see what I'm talking about. Fat people push everybody. <laughs> Allah said in this ayat, Oh, you who believe, Fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you that you may attain taqwa, that you may attain closeness to Allah, that you may attain a place where you fear Allah. Imagine that as if we were approaching that iftar, that suhoor, we said, Oh Allah, I fear you. And as I approach this food that you provided for me, I want to remember that I'm abstaining. I want to come from my ruh from my spirit and I want to remember the spirit of this awesome month that you gave us. But do we approach that table with rule or do we approach it with greed? And we have to look at this folks. And I know people don't like this lecture of mine. I've been told before, oh hey, ma'am, I don't like the way you teach about Ramadan. And I appreciate your honesty. But I unfortunately, I'm employed by Allah, and I have to teach what Allah has prescribed. So I say it again. In the spirit of abstinence, approach this month. Fasting cleanses the body and narrows the path of the shaitan. Imam Ghazali talks about this in great detail about how food gives you what? Nourishment. Energy. Nourishment. And when you've got energy, you can do a lot more naughty things than when you don't have energy. Because <laughs> if, you're, if you're really, really exhausted, the naughty thing doesn't look too enticing, particularly if I've got to go across the street to steal a watermelon. Just joking. And you get the point, right? So if it's, it's for that reason that fasting was prescribed for so many things that we need to abstain from. Because it narrows those veins. 
So it's, your veins are not fortified with the energy to push you toward the bad deeds. In the Sahian, the following Hadith was recorded, O young people, whoever among you can afford marriage, let him marry, or her. Whoever cannot afford it, let him fast, for it will be a shield for him. <coughs> we understand, and some of us might admit it, but we were all the age of these youngsters in this room at one time. And the most beautiful thing in the earth to us was our classmates of the opposite sex. And when we saw them in our teenage years, our hearts would flutter. And we didn't know what was going on. But we couldn't go home and say to our parents, I don't know what happened, but there's this beautiful girl in my class, and when I see her, I can't even talk. I start stammering and stammering, and, and then my heart does some strange stuff. Let's don't sweep it under the rug. Let's don't pretend that this is not real. We are humans. But the way to slow this down is by fasting. This is the prescription. Even Yusuf, who was a mature man, when seduced, he said, Oh Allah, make paradise more beautiful to me than this woman. That's when your thoughts are right. So that when you are approached by this beautiful man or this beautiful woman, then you will say, Oh Allah, make paradise more beautiful to me than this. Make my desire to please you more beautiful than my own personal desires. Let me not worship my desires, but let me worship you. Allah then states that the fast occurs during a fixed number of days so that it does not become hard on the hearts, thereby weakening resolve and endurance. Stages of fasting in Islam. Abu Khari and Muslim recorded that Aisha radiallahu anha said, the day of Ashura was a fasting day, or a day of fasting. When the obligation to fast Ramadan was revealed, those who wished fasted and those who wished did not. Abu Khari recorded the same from Ibn Umar and Ibn Mas'ud. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Baqarah verse 184, those who can fast with difficulty, that is, an old man or an old woman, they have a choice either to fast or to feed a miskin, poor person, for every day. Muad commented, in the beginning, those who wished fasted, and those who wished did not fast and feed a poor person for each day. This is the progression of fasting in Islam. What has been the progression of fasting in our own personal lives? I have met people that have fasted for 30 and 40 years and they'll brag about it and then in the next sentence they're gossiping about somebody. This is not about abstinence. Then I want to say, but I don't because it wouldn't be beautiful words and eloquent speech. I want to say, well, what's the fasting doing for you, brother? You just chewed your brother out and spat him out alive. That's like a cannibal. It's like eating dead flesh. Abu Qar recorded Sulaima bin al Aqwa saying that when Ayah 184 was revealed, those who did not wish to fast used to pay the fidya, feeding a poor person for each day they did not fast, until the following Ayah, Ayah 185, was revealed. It is also reported from Ubaidullah from Nafi that Ibn Umar said it was abrogated. Verse 184 was abrogated and 185 replaced it. As-Sudi reported that Murwa, Murwa narrated that Abdullah said about Ayat 184, it means those who find it difficult to fast, formerly those who wished fasted and those who wished did not, but fed the poor instead. Everybody gets this, right? Everybody remembers what abrogation is, a change. Allah then said in Ayat 184, sentence 3, But whoever does good of his own accord, meaning whoever fed an extra poor person, it is better for him. Sentence 4, And that you fast is better for you if you only know. 
Later, as I said, I of 185 was revealed, abrogating verse 184, and it made it very clear, and here it is. Ramadan is the month in which was sent down the Quran as a guide to mankind and clear signs for guidance and judgment between right and wrong. I think this speaks to the ideology behind fasting that the guidance came down in this month and every single night if we go to Tarawiya we actually hear one thirtieth of the Quran if we read it in the English in the daytime so that we understand what we read, we are getting a whole overhaul for the whole year. Our fitra, that which was born, our ruh, our spirit that connects to Allah is hearing the very words of Allah, the whole thing, in the month of Ramadan. So everyone who ever cites the crescent and is present at his home during that month should spend it in fasting. But if anyone is ill or on a journey, the prescribed should be made up by days later. Allah intends every facility for you. He does not want to put you in difficulty. He wants you to complete the prescribed period and to glorify Him in that He has guided you and perchance you shall be great. This is a power-packed verse because it says that we are to be grateful. Sometimes when I go to certain iftars, people are expressing their ungratefulness about the food. Instead of remembering this is abstinence, I had something to eat. MashaAllah, I'm so grateful. Shukranallah. So part of this month is being grateful, <coughs> developing gratitude. And so the new verse said what? It is prescribed to complete these days. It's not a choice anymore. It's prescribed to complete these days unless you are ill or on a journey. Allah praised the month of Ramadan out of the other months by choosing it to send down the glorious Quran just as He did for all the divine books He revealed to the prophets. I have looked for this particular hadith for quite some time and in the wee hours this morning I found it, alhamdulillah. I have always taught you that the Injil and the Torah were revealed in the month of Ramadan but was always afraid to tell you the date despite the fact that I had been taught this. I couldn't find it so I wouldn't say it and I found it this morning. Imam Ahmed reported Wathila bin al Asqa that Allah's Messenger said, the Sahuf, the pages of Ibrahim, were revealed during the first night of Ramadan. The Torah was revealed during the sixth night of Ramadan. The Injil was revealed during the thirteenth night of Ramadan. Allah revealed the Quran on the twenty-fourth night of Ramadan. This is something that really touched my heart when Allah blessed me to find this this morning because it was a pearl that I'd been digging for and I just could not find it. So you don't only now, you can only not only go out and say well all the divine books were brought to the lower heavens during the month of Ramadan, you can actually say what day <coughs> and you have an authentic source. Allahu Akbar. And I'll move on just a minute. I want to give folks time to take a picture of that. So you have 26 and 13 and 25. Yes. No, those are the dates that those... Three dates. Yes, exactly. Allah set a guidance for mankind and clear proofs for the guidance and the criterion between right and wrong. Here Allah praised the Qur'an and He revealed as guidance for the hearts of those who believe in it and adhere to its commands. We know that the Qur'an was sent just as the Prophet was sent as a mercy to all mankind, not just Muslims. This is the guidebook for life. It is the final edition of the guidebook of life. It is the code of ethics, the final revelation. Allah said, and clear proofs 
meaning is clear and unambiguous signs and unequivocal proofs for those who understand them. These proofs testify to the truth of the Quran, its guidance, the opposite of misguidance, and how it guides to the straight path, the opposite of the wrong path, and the distinction between the truth and falsehoods, and the permissible and the prohibited. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, So whoever of you cites the crescent of the first night of the month of Ramadan, that is, is present at his home, he must observe psalm, fasting that month. And this is the beautiful, beautiful thing. How many people in this room have actually seen the crescent? The, 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 the crescent for the month of Ramadan. All right, we... Very few people, because oftentimes in the various hemispheres, it's very hard to see it. Because it can be hidden by clouds, it can be hidden by other planets. But just think about this tiny slither in the sky, way, way, way up there where the moon is. It gives birth to this moon where all the divine revelations were revealed that gives birth to the month for you to abstain, that gives birth for you to, to, to obtain taqwa, for you to get close to Allah, not to see how you can satisfy your lower desires, <clears throat> how much food you can eat. <clears throat> this ayah requires the healthy person who witnessed the beginning of the month while residing in their land to fast the month. This ayah abrogated the ayah that allows a choice of fasting or paying the fidya. When Allah ordered fasting, He again mentioned the permission for the ill person and the traveler to break the fast and to fast other days instead as compensation. And let me say this, those of you who have diabetes, please consult with your doctors before you fast. Allah said He did not want to make a difficulty on you. The sanctity of life we have been talking about in this surah. Health is very important. Don't jeopardize your health. You can feed the poor instead. Allah, despair not of the mercy of Allah. He makes a concession for us. But don't jeopardize your health. It's not necessary. When one does not fast in this case, he is obliged to fast on other days. Allah said, Allah intends for you ease, and He does not want to make things difficult for you. This ayah indicates that Allah allowed such persons out of His mercy to make matters easy for them, to break the fast when they are ill or traveling, while the fast is still obligatory on the healthy person who are not traveling. The authentic Surah states that Allah's Messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, traveled during the month of Ramadan for the battle of Mecca. The Prophet ﷺ marched until he reached the area of Kedid and then broke his fast and ordered those who were with him to do likewise. So if the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ in his travels broke his fast, who are we to not break our fast if we are traveling? We say we emulate the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu then we should emulate the Prophet. This was recorded in the two Sahihs, Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. Breaking the fast mentioned in this hadith was not required for the companions used to go out with Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam during the month of Ramadan. Then some of them would fast while some of them would not fast and neither category would criticize the other. And neither category would criticize the other. And neither category would criticize the other. When the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu wanted to emphasize something, he would say it three times. Let's not, let's abstain, let's refrain from criticizing someone that we see who is not fasting. We do not know why they're not fasting and that is between them and Allah. It is none of our business. 
So somebody has diabetes, you want to put a guilt trip on them because they're fasting? Because they're not fasting, thank you. If the command mentioned in the Hadith required breaking the fast, the Prophet would have criticized those who fasted. Allah's Messenger himself sometimes fasted while traveling. For instance, it was reported in the two Sahihs that Abu Adarda said, We once went with Allah's Messenger وسلم, during Ramadan while the heat was intense. One of us would place his hand on his head because of the intense heat. <laughs> Only Allah's Messenger and Abdullah bin Ruwayha were fasting at that time. Observing the permission to break the fast while traveling is better. As Allah's Messenger وسلم, said about fasting while traveling, those who did not fast have done good. And there is no harm for those who fasted. Those who did not fast have done good. The messenger said that. In another hadith, the Prophet وسلم, said, Hold to Allah's permission that He has granted you. Hold to the concessions that Allah has given you. Aisha narrated that Hamza bin Amr al-Aslami said, O Messenger of Allah, I fast a lot. Should I fast while traveling? The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, Fast if you wish or do not fast if you wish. This is for the traveler. Don't make it difficult for yourself. Nowadays we're not traveling on camels, so perhaps if you're going to make a quick run to Leesburg and back, you may not need to fast. But perhaps if you're going to Gainesville and you're going to be in the hospital and you're going to have to see a doctor or something, then give yourself the permission that Allah and His Messenger has given you. And don't despair of the mercy of Allah. Don't despair of the mercy of Allah. And whatever you do, don't criticize others for the decision that they've made. This is something I see all the time. Oh, he's not a Muslim. She's not a Muslim. They don't even fast. How many people have heard that before? Look, Just look at the hands. Who are we? That is shared. Because now we are making the religion. Instead of what Allah has said, we are the ones. This is not acceptable in Islam. This hadith is in the two sahihs. It was reported that if the fast becomes difficult while traveling, then breaking the fast is better. Jabir said that Allah's Messenger وسلم, saw a man who was being shaded by other people while traveling. The Prophet asked about him and he was told that man was fasting. The Prophet وسلم, said, it is not a part of bil. And I need to correct that. Last week I wasn't saying it well. I was saying it more like something that people drink here in the United States. Um, bir is uh, the correct Arabic pronunciation. It is not a part of piety to fast while traveling. Listen to what the Prophet said. This is from Bukhari and Muslim. Oh, 